Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Priyan Chagarwal. I've been into competitive programming for about three years now. In today's video, I'm going to talk about ICPC. ICPC is the world's biggest and the most prestigious programming competitions out there. It is also known as the Olympics of competitive programming competitions. So ICPC was started in 1977. It's been almost four decades now. And in these four decades, uh, almost 400,000 people have participated in it. Now, if you were to look at the stats from last year's ICPC, then almost 50,000 people participated in it from 3,000 plus universities and 100 plus countries. Talking about the growth of this competition, over the last 25 years, the number of participants in ICPC has increased by 2,000%. So ICPC is a really prestigious competition and almost anybody in the programming community would know about it. So in case you're appearing for interviews or in case you're talking to anybody, and if you tell them that, you know, you've appeared for ICPC, you've gone to this stage in ICPC, then that's considered to be a very, very big deal. So before we go into the details of ICPC, let me just tell you that there are three main stages. The first is the online programming contest, the second is the regional contest, and the third is the world finals. Now for some regions, there is another contest which is known as the continent finals that takes place. So for example, if you look at India, India comes in the Asia West region. So there is another contest which is known as the Asia West continent finals. So this is something that has been recently introduced and it takes place between the regional contest and the world finance contest. So now that we know a bit about the stages, it would be a good time to talk about the eligibility criteria for ICPC. So first of all, ICPC is not an individual contest. It is a team based contest. So in order to participate in ICPC, you need to have a team of three people, which should be from the same college. Other than that, you need to have a coach from the same college. The coach here is just supposed to register you as a team. So in order to participate in ICPC, you cannot register yourself as a team, but you need to have a coach or some faculty or professor in your college who can register you as a team. Now there is another concept of a reserve member. So basically in the team of three, you can also choose to have another reserve member. So just in case if somebody doesn't show up on the main day on the contest of the regionals or rates of the world finals, then you can choose to, you know, uh, team up with that fourth person. But again, this is very optional and most teams usually don't have any reserve members. Now, another eligibility criteria for ICPC is that in case you've participated in ICPC before, and if you've appeared for five regional contests, or in case you've appeared for two world finance contests, then you cannot appear for ICPC again. So there are three main stages here. The first is the online preliminary round. The second is the regional contest and the third is the world finance. So the first stage in this entire contest is the online preliminary round. Before you appear for the online preliminary round, you also have to indicate which of the regionals that you're registering for. So when you look at India, up until last to last year, there used to be four regionals, Khadakpur, Amritapuri, Kanpur and Gwalior. Uh, last year, we just had three regionals, which was Gwalior Pune, there was Kanpur and there was Amritapuri. This time we only have two regionals, right? So when you're registering for regionals, you basically have to indicate which of the two regionals that you would like to apply for. You obviously have to register for at least one regional, but in maximum, you can register for two regionals. So let's say you've registered for Amritapuri and let's say you've registered for Kanpur. Now what happens here is that when you're appearing for the online preliminary round, there are two rank lists that are made. The first is the common rank list for that same contest. The second is the regional rank list. Now each of these regional sites have limited number of slots. For example, Amritapuri could have 100 slots, Kanpur could have 50 slots. So what will happen here is that only 100 teams can qualify for Amritapuri, right? So Amritapuri will make its own rank list. Now each of these regionals will make their own rank list and it is not like, you know, if they look at the preliminary round, they will just pick up the top teams from that, that have registered for this regional and they will make the rank list like that. It doesn't work like that. What happens here is that some of the regional sites, they say that we want to have the most number of unique colleges that appear for our regional. Basically, when you're appearing for the online preliminary round, you could have multiple teams from your own college appearing for that uh, same contest, right? And multiple teams could register for the same regional site. So let's say if you look at Amritapuri, Amritapuri could just say that I don't want all of the top 100 teams, but I want to first of all select the top colleges, the top teams from every single college. So let's say if you look at IIIT Delhi and let's say you look at DTU. Now if you look at the rank list and if I tell you all of the five teams of IIIT Delhi have come before DTU, basically all of these five teams have ranked above DTU. Then if you look at any regional site like Amritapuri, Amritapuri is not going to select all of these five teams and reject DTU's two teams. So what Amritapuri will do is that it will first of all shortlist IIIT Delhi's first team and it will then shortlist DTU's first team. So what you'll see here is that the four teams that came after the first team from IIIT Delhi, they might not be able to qualify, but the first team of DTU that might have, let's say, come below these five teams could qualify, right? Now, this criteria could be different for different regions. So it is always a very good practice to, you know, first of all, go through their, let's say, page. Like they might be having a website wherein they will tell you exactly what is the criteria for their regional site. So before you register for the online preliminary round, always look at the criteria that they have. Now, there is one more thing. So if you look at it, let's say you have four regions, right? If let's say the top team, let's say you're not the top team in your college and let's say the top team has registered for Khadakpur and Amritapuri. Now it obviously makes sense to not register for Khadakpur and Amritapuri because you know 
that for a fact this team will qualify for both of these regionals and my team will not be able to qualify right so what you should do is that you should apply for regionals in which the top teams from your colleges are not applying but again this year we just have two regionals so you don't really have a lot of choice but when there used to be four regionals then you know you could have a lot of choice you right so the best way to qualify for any regional site is to just come first in your college and if you feel that you cannot come first in your college then it is always a better choice or a better strategy to register for regionals in which the top teams from your college are not registered so what do we discuss so far uh, there is first of all the online preliminary round in which all of the teams from india they compete together and then all of these teams would have registered for some of the regional sites now all of these regional sites what they will do is that they will make their own rank list and there will be some criteria on which they will decide uh, you can have a look at their website to look at what exactly is the criteria now for every single regional site it will pick up the top let's say 100 teams it depends on the number of slots that they have and these are the teams that will represent uh, you know their own college or that will go and compete in the on site regionals so before this you had an online preliminary round right this was happening online but now after this you will be having an on site regional contest so you know as i've told you there are limited number of teams that qualify for every regional site all of these regional contests happen on site and they are you know independent of each other so now let's suppose you are done with the preliminary round and you've qualified for at least one regional contest now what happens in the on site regional contest this is the place where it gets really really interesting so i have seen many competitive programmers and i'm pretty sure most of you who are watching this video you would have participated in online contests right on code forces code share but rarely you would have participated in a offline contest wherein you know you sit on a computer with your team and together you participate with all of the other teams this is what happens in the on site regional contest besides that you get to travel and it is a very very exciting experience like let's suppose i mean most of the coders that are out there i know they don't really have a very good social life they usually are sitting on the laptop and then nev never traveling as such so when you look at this regional contest this gives you an opportunity to you know go on a trip with your teammates like i have been to two regions i have been to amritapuri and i have been to kanpur i can tell you that if i were to remember something from my college these would be some experiences that i would never never forget right so let's now talk about what exactly happens in these on site contests so all of the teams that have qualified let's say for amritapuri regions you would travel from your city to amritapuri regions now first of all there will be an inauguration ceremony at the region site on the day that you are invited at uh there will be a practice contest on the same day in which you will be able to understand the environment and you know the basically you will get to visit their labs and you will see exactly how you know their computers are working and in case you have certain problems with your computer you can just let their organizers know that this is the problem and they can fix it before the actual contest so this is day one where you actually travel to that same place you have the inauguration ceremony and you have the practice contest the next day you you know have the main contest which is like a 5 hour long contest and the interesting part here is that you don't get three computers like you know you are a team of 3 people right in icpc you will not be getting three computers to participate you will be getting a single computer to participate so it is a very very exciting experience let's say you are coding a problem you know you are stuck then let's say your teammate can help you or let's say you know you start fighting with your own teammate just because you're not able to code fast enough so all of these things happen and uh, it is a very cool experience you have a single computer and another thing here is that you cannot use the internet basically uh, all of us competitive programmers are in the habit of using the black box strategy right like whenever we need the code of any algorithm or data structure we just directly copy it from github and then use it right this doesn't happen in icpc regionals what you have to do is you can carry a 25 page booklet so in this 25 page booklet you can write all the algorithms all the implementations of big algorithms like let's say heavy light decomposition or fast fourier transform you can write all of these and you can carry it along with you you get 25 pages per day so essentially whenever you're coding you can refer to that booklet and uh, let's say you want to code the extra you don't remember the code so if you have it in your booklet you can directly you know use it now there is another interesting concept here which is the concept of balloons so whenever you solve problems in the icpc regional contest if let's say you have solved five problems the organizers will come to your desk and will, they will attach five balloons to your desk so this way if you look around your place you will be able to see a lot of balloons right and if you want to see how many uh, you know number of problems any team has solved you can just look at the desk and look at the number of balloons that are you know above the desk these would be the total number of problems that they would have solved another cool thing in the regional contest is the concept of freezing the scoreboard so like i mentioned this is a 5 hour long contest after the first 4 hours what they will do is that they will freeze the scoreboard now if you look at the scoreboard you will only be able to see the scoreboard which would be up until the first 4 hours so if you have solved let's say six problems let's say you end up solving the seventh problem in that last one hour then the team the other teams would not know about it and they would only get to know about it when the final results are you know declared so this makes the excitement go 10x in the regional contest and just after the regional contest is over everyone is like you know how many problems did you solve after the scoreboard was frozen so it is like very very cool and very exciting i know when i'm talking about all of these things i am so so excited because i experienced this first hand and i feel that every single person who is doing competitive programming they must be excited about it and they must experience this once 
in their college life so now let's talk about what exactly happens you know uh, in terms of the results of the regionals so first of all for every single regional there is one team that is selected which is the top team from that region which go to the world finals directly so let's say there are four regionals then four teams are directly qualified for the world finals now what might happen here is that if let's say for india we have more slots like we might have let's say 10 slots from india and if we only sent four teams to the world finals then how do we decide the next six teams then for this there is this concept of a continent finals this continent finals doesn't happen in all of the continents but for india which comes in the asia west continent region there is this contest called the asia west continent finals that takes place in this teams from india bangladesh sri lanka and i think pakistan and i don't know iraq or iran maybe all of these countries they come together and you know they participate in that contest now you might feel that you know this asia west continent finals might happen in some other country for example like bangladesh or let's say sri lanka but it doesn't really happen like that uh, the asia west continent finals happens in your own country basically if you are from india you would be participating in india itself so in this asia west continent finals what happens is that the teams who you know were good enough but could not get to the world finals because there was some other team that was better in their regional side if they want to qualify they have a chance here so basically they have the limited number of slots let's say they say that 10 slots will be fixed for asia west continent finals then the top teams that come like it doesn't really matter in which country you are from like you could be from india you could be from bangladesh but the top 10 teams in that asia west continent finals they will be also qualifying for the world finals so this way there are not just three stages sometimes there are four stages uh, like the asia west continent finals comes into this picture and you get a second chance to qualify for the world finals so if i were to tell you a bit about my icpc experience from last year so we qualified for kanpur regions and we qualified for amritapuri regions so we went to kanpur by train and we went to amritapuri by flight so in the kanpur regions we got rank 7 and in the amritapuri regions we got rank 28 so like i told you that you know only the first team qualifies for the world finals while some of the other teams some of the top teams from every region side they qualify for the continent finals so because of our performance in the kanpur regions wherein we got rank 7 we qualified for the asia west continent finals and in the asia west continent finals our team from triple id delhi they got rank 14 so this was not rank 14 among only the teams from india but rank 14 among teams from india bangladesh sri lanka pakistan and iraq or i don't know iran maybe now the teams that would qualify for the world finals from the asia west continent finals haven't been decided yet but just in case if there are 16 or 17 slots from asia west uh, continent then our team which is pgp triple id delhi they might also qualify for the world finals which would be in i think november this time in egypt now the next stage after this continent finals or after the regional contest in most cases is the world finals this is the place wherein the top teams the top teams from the entire world they come in and they compete for 5 hours again and this is like that contest which is just insane i mean you would have looked at people like tourists you would have looked at people like eric to on court forces right these red coders these international grandmasters these are the people that you get to see in these type of contests and you know the amount of adrenaline rush that you get when you're looking at these people and when you're participating is just insane now when you look at the icpc world finals they don't just rank you in terms of like 1 2 3 they also have medals so they have three medals gold silver and bronze now it is not like only the first team gets gold and the second team gets silver and the third team gets bronze it doesn't happen like that the first four teams get gold the next four teams get silver and the next four teams get bronze so basically there are 12 teams that get medals now let me tell you one thing that from india none of the teams have won a medal at the icpc world finals till date the best rank that india got uh, which was i think in 2012 was rank 18 and i think this was a team from triple it hyderabad and that is how i think triple it hyderabad also got very very famous now i know that uh, there is a notion in this programming community that uh, since india hasn't won a uh, medal till date in icpc world finals then india should basically stop doing cp and indians should not even try cp so let me tell you one thing that you know it is not just about winning the medal it is about persevering and it is about believing that you can win the medal now you might ask me why does india not win medals right there is a very strong reason for it now when you look at countries like russia china or usa people here start competitive programming from you know when they're in class 9 when they're in class 6 and if you look at indian competitive programmers most of them get to know about cp when they're in college right so how are you expecting somebody who's done cp for 4 years to compete with somebody who's done cp for 10 years right so it's not like that indians are not smart enough or you know indians don't work that hard it is just that most people in india don't get to know about cp from a very early age right so if you only get to know about cp in college and that is the time when you have to participate in icpc you don't get so much time to prepare and i can tell you one thing that if you ever qualify for icpc regionals or if you ever qualify for icpc asia west continent finals then you know cracking all of these jobs is like a cake walk thing so what i will say is that if you are a competitive programmer icpc is something that you should definitely try it is such an exciting experience and i can tell you that once you graduate this will be one of those experiences or one of those memories 
that you will always cherish so you know don't don't do it for interview preparation like i would highly recommend you to prepare for icpc if you are interested in cp and other than that also if you get to a good enough level like if you go to the regions or if you go to the asia west continent finals then if you talk about these things in your interview na the interviewer is going to definitely you know consider you above the other candidates who let's say wouldn't have heard about icpc or who wouldn't have performed so well in icpc so now you might ask me what are the benefits of you know uh, preparing for icpc and what are the benefits that you get if you go to a good enough stage in icpc so first of all let me tell you that uh, this is one experience that you're always going to remember once you graduate from college so it is not just about you know looking at the benefits it is also about looking at the experiences that you will get basically when you go to these regional sites you get to network with such amazing coders for example when i was in amritapuri there were so many people who came up to me and who had a chat with me and i loved it and i also you know went up to people like utkarsh and you know other high rated coders and i was like i'm a big fan of you and i just want to you know let's have a picture with you and other than that also when you're preparing for icpc you tend to you know work in teams so most of the competitive programmers that are out there they try to work alone and they're very good individual workers but when it comes to working in teams they somehow lack right so this is a major problem in icpc teams as well like a lot of teams what they do is that they you know just team up with people who are very very pro and who are the best in their college but they don't look at the team coordination so if you look at my team pgp triple it delhi we did not you know pick up the people who were the best at that time in our college we just formed a team amongst ourselves knowing that you know we had an amazing team coordination and this worked out very very well in the regionals as well like there were many many teams who were much higher rated than us but we got a better rank than them in the kanpur and also in the asia west uh, you know continent finals why was this because we had a very good team coordination other than that when you prepare for icpc you tend to learn such advanced data structures such advanced algorithms and you know when you look at things like interview preparation when you look at things like dsa they become such a cake walk after this and also one more thing when you have gone to a certain level like regionals or when you gone to a certain level like asia west continent finals you can mention all of these things in your resume so yeah i think that is all that i wanted to talk about in this video a lot of you wanted me to make a video on icpc so i hope this one helps and uh, in case you would like to know about my experiences my personal experiences in icpc regionals or asia west continent finals then be sure to comment and i would love to make a detailed video on that now also in case you would like me to make a detailed video on how do you prepare for icpc i can do that as well so be sure to leave a comment in case this is something that interests you and if you're new to the channel just know that i make a lot of content on competitive programming so if this is something that interests you be sure to subscribe the channel and till then i'll see you in another video